So as many of you are aware, my wife and I are co-owners of the Cadillac Lyric, and she's the primary driver. So for this video, I thought it would be best if she was able to speak to the upcoming loss of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, because it's her who uses that on a routine basis. And so for people who are not uh, familiar, my wife's name is Miriam. Hello, Miriam. Hi. And uh, I'd like to start with just a general um, demonstration of how you use CarPlay. So when you get in the car in the morning and are going about your daily routine, uh, in what aspect is CarPlay involved? Um, well, whenever I get into my car in the morning, which is usually pretty early, and um, I use it for music, I use it for listening to audiobooks, um, I drive a lot in this car, so um, during long trips or even short trips, CarPlay always comes into my mind. And that's right here. Do you actually display it on the screen also? No, usually whenever the car, um, I get in the car, it automatically connects to auto, to CarPlay just like that. It's just somebody to send me a text. Oh, okay. And I'll respond to that later. But um, if I have music playing before, it'll also do it automatically. It's just that right now we stop the music so it shut it off oh okay so normally you get in the car it starts playing your music and right. you have the ability to interact with text messages and things like that do you ever use it for the navigation no i do not use it for the navigation just for the reason that um in this car uh, when i have the navigation on i can display the navigation in between the through the steering wheel and I prefer that. So I don't have to look in this way or this side. I can see the navigation in this side. If the navigation is sometimes a little iffy in this car, and sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, during that time, then I'll have the gauge setting, and then I'll have the map over here. Don't you ever find the steering wheel gets in the way of the navigation, or is that not? No, I do not, because the way that I have the uh, seat uh, put and the way that I have the... Uh, the steering wheel and I can see right through see it. See right through it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. The other thing um, that uh, GM was mentioning as a reason for removing CarPlay was that it was a safety issue, meaning that if you are using CarPlay in order to have content onto the screens of the car, they are alluding to uh, drivers looking at their phone more so. Uh, do you find that's the case with the CarPlay and the Lyric, that you're looking at your phone? Actually, I do not look at my phone. So, for example, if I go here to my Apple Play and I have my music here, uh, let's say, for example, and I have turned the volume all the way down, um, let's say that I have chosen uh, this music and I have it, and I usually, if I'm going to make any changes on my music, I do it prior to starting to drive. And this is playing, it's just that the speakers are off right now with the wheel and control that is right on my um, on the console, in the center console, which is right where I put my arm, which is what it's designed for. Yeah. You can actually turn the wheel and I can control the music, even changing uh, what music I want to listen to. I can even go back. Um, so it's a very small um, eye change from what I'm doing. I never touch my phone. Uh, same thing over here if i wanted to respond to her right now i would actually give a command an audio command um you have the option of having the car automatically read through your text messages but i don't have it set up like, like that because usually i have other people sometimes i have other people in the car yes yeah, and, and it's a privacy issue but if i were to have it or if i do respond uh carplay tells me do you want to respond mm -hmm. and i'll just say yes and then i'll give the message or i'll say no um, so it's all by voice command, so I never stop looking at the road. And it seems like they have it more advanced than some of the other integrations that um, cell phone companies, and uh, I'll go talk, t touch on uh, Bluetooth here in just a second, but please don't press play because we'll hit a copyright infringement right away. With, well, with, it's muted all the way. It's kind of playing, but this is, this. we can just go back. It's it's just a random um, playlist. That yeah. Um, so... They're telling us they're going to take away CarPlay, and they're not giving us a choice. In fact, I've seen in uh, 2024 Cadillac Lyrics, the little icon that you have there has already been removed. And apparently in the 2023 editions, and we have the debut edition that's going to be removed at some point. So what will you miss most once that's gone? 
I am going to miss the ability of getting in the car and be able to let CarPlay take over uh, my music and my spot in my music. I do have an icon here for Spotify, uh, which is the main um, music service that I use. Um, and I can actually toggle between the CarPlay and that one. If I were to click on that one, the music that is playing right now would stop playing and it doesn't really recognize where I was. So I would have to then find the uh, record, the playlist that I was listening to. Ooh. I would have to then go to the actual song that I was listening to and then restart the system or restart my list. With CarPlay, if I get out of the car, it automatically stops playing in the car. It actually pauses on my phone. So if I wanted to start listening during my lunch hour, it'll pick me up exactly where I was. Um, and right now with oh, this so like system, when you're it. when you're outside of the car, right. you're listening, and then it'll pause and it'll retain the pause point Correct. and then start playing in again my in phone. the car. Yep, in my phone. Yeah. So um, I think that they've been doing some tweaking because now it does recognize where I was, but it's not because of the CarPlay. It is because of Spotify. So Spotify recognized where I was and then Spotify will do it. But then um, if I get out of the car, I won't do that. I would have to reset the system and it'll be like, oh yeah, you were listening over here, but I have to initiate all that rather than just getting in the car and letting it start by itself. Hmm. Yeah. The, it, other, the other thing that I don't, that I really enjoy about CarPlay that I don't have the access here is the apps. So CarPlay has all these apps that are available to me. Um, I listen to a lot of um, audiobooks and things like that. So Audible is the one that I have books in. So it's the same thing. I would be able to just press Audible and then I have my continued listening or I can just go to my collections, which I would just choose, you know, before I started and go from there in the car. Uh, in the if i were to do it with bluetooth i would have to then open it. i think that if i were then to decide that i don't want to listen to the um book anymore then i would have to pick up my phone pick up the phone and then i would have to yeah. get out of there i would have to close that app i would have to then open the app and with this um i'm not really looking away from the road all i'm doing is the Especially same thing on like a two-lane road that'd be dangerous right. i mean if you're uh, doing super cruise, I suppose it's not right. too bad, but on a two lane road, that sounds dangerous. Well, and not only that, but then the difference between me looking at the console in the center and the road is the same thing as in any other car where you used to change your radio station whenever we had the cars prior to this kind of system. <laughs> radio. radio station or in the 90s when you used to change, you know, your, your I'm going to age, you know, age myself here when you had to change your tape you know your cassette, yeah, your cassette. or flip it over yep. or you had to change your cd you know those were the things that were right there that's why it was placed in that spot mm -hmm. uh now looking at your phone it takes longer and you know because you, then you have to unlock the phone and even if it's like faced you have to hold it you're looking at you have to look at the phone which means that you have to you know i think it's a lot more maneuvering and then you have to scroll you have to do things that in this system it doesn't let me because even if i was listening to my music the way that carplay has it set um if i was driving if we go back to um my music here if i had and, and this is the other thing like i can have access to um our charging points our apps um, and then we wouldn't have that in the car in in the phone like i would have to open the app and hear the you know, yeah, they got like EV the, people, so they're all over the place. Yeah, they got the uh, my Cadillac icon in there, but it's, it doesn't seem as intuitive as the no. uh, the charging apps, like um, the Electro America Charge Point right. and um, Plug Share is is kind of nice in order to have. Right. And um, I saw you had a better root planner in there as well. That's a pretty good one. Right, and then for example, so if I went back to my Spotify here, and if we were driving, um, I wouldn't be able to scroll this much. It would actually limit it. It would say, you know, scrolling is limited because you're driving. Ooh. So I like that. I like the fact that if I want to change um, and not be able to scroll as much, CarPlay limits my amount of scrolling. So it says you can't sit there and scroll, you know, willy nilly or for as long as you want. We will limit how much you can until you come to a, to a stop. So in a traffic light, I'll wait for a traffic light and then I can scroll. Or I can give a voice command and it'll say, can you start playing this? And, and it'll recognize it and go ahead and start playing it. Hmm. Cool. 
Um, so I know that Rivian and Tesla don't have Apple CarPlay and we were previous Tesla owners. Mm -hmm. um, you were the first one to start driving the Tesla around. So how different was it when you were only using Bluetooth with the Tesla versus what you have now? I think that both systems have pros and cons. Um, I gotten used to this one. And so, you know, it's one of those things of you kind of navigate around it. Yeah, if it was never there, okay. But if it was there and then getting taken away, that's kind of frustrating. Correct. And especially because, like I said, the control that I have with the wheel that they actually designed for me to be able to control it with one hand on the wheel, with one hand really, you know, even in the case of an emergency, and I was doing the center console wheel, I don't have to stop uh, you know, doing any other movement other than grab the wheel with two hands because I'm looking ahead and I'm just doing a very short shift of eye movement. If I am doing it with a phone, especially since there are so many places and in states, including North Carolina, where it's illegal to be on your phone, mm -hmm. um, then I would have to hold it down so in case a policeman comes by, they don't see me. Because how do you explain? I'm not talking on the phone. I'm changing my radio station or I'm changing that. They're just going to say that I'm using a phone in my hand. So it has to be hand held down. And in the case of an emergency, then now I have to drop the phone and hold onto the wheel. And we all know that sometimes it's a matter of half a second if there's debris on the road or somebody comes yeah, by. Yeah, road debris is terribly uh, right. frightening. I went through a speeding ticket class, I don't know, about two years ago, something like that. And they actually said it's illegal yeah. to hold the phone. And right. I think in North Carolina, that's the case. So right. it's like flat out illegal. Um, Okay, so uh, last question. We'll wrap it up here. You got a speeding ticket? I'm just kidding. <laughs> you didn't know? <laughs> <laughs> like that one in under the radar. Um, Get it under the radar. Under ah! the radar. Oh, boy. <laughs> here until Thursday. Get the veal. Um, just to summarize. go. I'm sorry, you are going to say? Yeah, one of the things I don't like about the car play is that you have the two systems competing for each other in your attention. So if I wanted to ask Google to do something, it picks up really quick. Like if I say, you know, Google, can you take me home? It all, I didn't say the hate part first, <laughs> so that's why I didn't respond. Um, if I say Google, take me home, it can hear me really well. But if I were to say um, for the system, for the CarPlay system, I would have to say Siri. And because there's music in the background or the phone is in the charger or the phone is somewhere else, I have to kind of lower the volume or I would have to do something that triggers it or, you know, so it's much harder to compete with the voice commands. Once it's activated, it's easy to do. Uh, but getting the attention of Siri is much harder to do because of the system, I guess. Um, so that would be something that I would have changed. But um, what about your contacts? Do you use your contacts much with CarPlay? I find I don't, but I don't know about you. I only use my contacts uh, whenever they're responding to me or whenever they're sending me messages like right now. Yeah, right, which can be done through Bluetooth as well. It's a little bit right. more clunky, but it can be done through Bluetooth. Right. The only problem is that if CarPlay is um, in activated, I can't tell Google to access it. Like Google will tell yeah, me, you exactly. have to shut it off. Yep. That I find that it's a, you know, it, it's a pain in the butt because the other one can't hear me. And that's the issue. That's when I have to get my eyes off the road to then try to open. I have to like make a phone call or I have to send a text to someone. Uh, I have to initiate that manually with CarPlay uh, because, you know, the two systems are not compatible. And so that would be the only time that I do it. And what ends up doing is that I don't do it. I don't call anybody while I'm in the car unless I'm doing it before I get on the road um, or unless it's a response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't find that the contact thing uh, baked into CarPlay will be, for me, that much of a detriment. Just so viewers know, I drive the Volvo XC40 Recharge uh, as my daily driver, and it too has uh, CarPlay and the uh, Android Automotive baked into the um, in-dash navigation systems. And I find the Google navigation to be superior because it, it does a really good job of estimating the state of charge on your arrival, what's known as the arrival state of charge. So for that one reason, I always use the Google navigation because we're driving EVs and the state of charge is something you need to keep your eye on. Right. So for me, I like that. Um, so in, to, in summary, 
Um, how much of a de big deal do you think is going to be for the loss of Apple CarPlay uh, for you as a Lyric owner? I don't know, because to me, when I transferred over from the Bluetooth to CarPlay, it was just something new that I got used to and it became very helpful. If there was a way that I can do similar things with the Google system, I don't think I would miss it that much. You know, I guess that I would have to get used to it. I think that there are other things in the car that I would change rather than just getting used to the new system. Um, I do think that it's going to be more detrimental as far as I'm very music oriented. So not being able to enjoy uh, doing my listening of music, especially on those long drives when I go across states or when I go see my parents that are two hours away, not having that ease as a safe driver to just, you know, control my music with just the knob um and having to look away or having to make a decision that has to be for two hours because i won't be able to change it or it's going to put me in a you know in a situation that's going to be more of a concern to me now if google goes ahead and fixes those situations yeah i was thinking maybe, maybe maybe the in dash apps will become more close and you won't actually have to use your phone instead right but then there's no some of the apps are not available that i know of True. you know so like yeah. i wouldn't be able to do the audible, audible you know and those kind of things like you know, i'm pretty sure that i'll be able to do um spotify things like that but there are other apps that i'm concerned about not being able to have okay well there you have it uh, loss of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto from a existing Lyric owner who uses it every day. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.